Okay, hey, it's been a while. Sweet, uh, big trade. The Montreal Canadiens have just traded Shea Weber's contract to the Vegas Golden Knights in exchange for Yevgeny Dodonov. Those of you who don't know, uh, Shea Weber, obviously, uh, might never play hockey again. The leg, the ankle. Uh, Shea Weber is a warrior, and the injuries caught up to him at the end of last year's playoffs. Probably never going to play again. What is this deal? Why did it happen? Why would Vegas make this trade? Why would the Canadians make this trade? And Evgeny Dodonov, let's not forget about him. If you don't know his name, well, I'll remind you a little bit later. We'll have a bit of a history lesson going back to the trade deadline. First off, the Canadians had a big goal this offseason. Kent Hughes, the new GM, great work, by the way, I love him, uh, has made one thing clear. The Canadians need to make cap space. They're not a good team. They finished last. They have Shane Wright coming or first overall pick coming. May not be Shane Wright. Who knows? But the Canadians, the worst place you can be in the NHL is bad and not have cap space. And with this, the Canadians have made some room. Shea Weber's contract is, listen, uh, LTIR and working in it is a complicated thing within the salary cap world. And I don't always understand what it is. And I like to think I'm a fanatic of the game of hockey. Uh, I, I pay a lot of attention to stuff on cap friendly and that. But I just always don't understand it. I don't think a lot of people do to the letter. I don't think every team does. But this is the way the Canadians are looking at it this very second. This is according to Cap Friendly. They have projected cap space of $1.9 million now that Shea Weber is gone. That's not a ton. Not great. Total cap of $80.5 million. And the free agents that they have coming up, I'm going to list RFAs first. Samuel Mottenbow in that. K.O. Clegg, mm, Alexander Romanov being another, like that's a, or the only big one so far. Uh, Michael Bazzetta and Rem Pitlick, and then UFAs, Laura Dauphin, Matthew Perot, Tyler Pitlick, and William Lagason. Not all sexy names, but Cole Caulfield also being up next year as an RFA. Uh, Nick Suzuki's contract kicking in this year, that big deal. They need space. And they're going to make another move. We know Jeff Petrie's basically gone. Um, but this is the first step in the Canadians making room. Shea Weber is an interesting case because he has what is now an illegal contract. A couple of CBAs ago, they rectified it. It's a bit of history. You rarely see these kind of deals around anymore. Uh, Crosby is on one. Duncan Keith is on one. Shea Weber is on one. I don't know how many else are around. So there's a bit of nonsense when you look at the contract. When this is from uh, Pierre Lebrun on Twitter, and you, you can also find this on Cap Friendly itself. Weber has four years left on his deal at 7.8 million AAV, but the real cash, the money he's actually making, next season is 3 million, then $1 million in each of the remaining three years. What's significant for that is the Vegas Golden Knights are going to be able to use Shea Weber's LTIR room, uh, and they're not going, to be, not going to be paying him, sorry, a lot of actual money, uh, which is now the Vegas Golden Knights. You know, they're a ruthless pursuit of the Stanley Cup, and they have been doing a lot of bad things to the salary cap this year, uh, including trying to trade Evgeny Dadanov to the Anaheim Ducks, the trade deadline. Now, that trade was then actually voided because the Anaheim Ducks were previously on Evgeny Dadanov's no trade list. Now, Evgeny Dadanov, by the way, I believe after, oh, sorry, starting this year has one year left on his contract. And that's going to be a $5 million. Uh, what's probably going to help, I don't know if they're going to hold on to Evgeny Dodonov. If you hold half of his salary, 2.5, a guy who is capable and this year scored 20 goals, that is not a bad depth option to have for your middle six for the power play for another team. You could get an asset for that at the draft. I'm not saying you're going to get a first for him, but you can get something for that player. By the way, Evgeny Dodonov, apparently, uh, this is again per cap friendly. Uh, it is a 10-team no-trade clause. And apparently, the Canadians are not on that list unless something comes out where they are, but I'm surprised by that because apparently a thing of him not wanting to go to Anaheim in the first place was taxes. Quebec taxes suck, so that's a little surprising. And why would Vegas do this besides the fact that I mentioned in Weber's LTR room and you know, Vegas cap situation is kind of messy. They moved to Donov's contract, which is pretty important for that. Not to mention after the mishap at the trade deadline of moving him and saying, I didn't want to go. You traded me somewhere. I didn't want to be the relationship. Even if the did play well, the rest of that regular season, Vegas didn't make the playoffs, but still um, I doubt you could bring him back into the fold or he would probably then at that point say, I don't want to be here anymore. And now Montreal are reaping the benefits of this. I was convinced that Shea Weber was going to have to be the Canadians attached prospect 
or a pick to it. And instead, they actually get an asset back from the Vegas Golden Knights, taking advantage of their cap situation while sending away Shea Weber's contract. I think it's a really good example of tidy business from Kent Hughes. I like the deal a lot. Now, Shea Weber, because this is the end of Shea Weber in Montreal, I'm sure hopefully one day one of his contracts actually up that, you know, hopefully uh, the Canadians can do something special for him. He was the captain. Uh, I don't know about this 100%, but I think now if he retires officially, I don't know if Montreal can get dinged by the cap recapture because of it being the illegal contract. I could be wrong, but that just came to mind. But anyway, to Shane Weber himself. This is a guy that entered the market in an extreme way, maybe the most extreme way in recent memory that a player has come into Montreal. The P.K. Subban trade, which was a moment that nearly broke this fan base in half. Um, shout out to P.K. Subban, who was in Montreal right now, probably for the Grand Prix for F1. But anyway, Shea Weber came in, and I think everyone knew he wasn't going to finish playing in Montreal with that contract, his age, his style of play. But what he was playing, Shea Weber, and this is not just his time in Montreal, but going back to Nashville, this is a guy who I think is going to be in the Hall of Fame. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a Norris Trophy, which is insane. Doesn't have a cup, but man, the intimidation of Shea Weber as a player, a warrior. He was averaging so much ice time going into the cup final for the Habs last year against Tampa. Playing on one leg, everyone will know the slap shots. In fact, one of my favorite memories in hockey was a power play at the Bell Center when the Canadians, I think it was for once a really good power play from them. And Weber had three slap shots. And they were all blocked once by Joel Erickson Eck. And even Erickson Eck got a round of applause because you just drafted, not drafted, sorry, blocked a Shea Weber slap shot. Three consecutive. The man was in two pieces when he got back into the bench. But it wasn't just his physicality. The shot, you know what, breaking the net at an Olympic game. Um, again, being a big force in Team Canada. There are few examples of those sort of physical specimens where you have to know a player when he's on the ice. I can think of Dustin Buffalo as another one who we know is retired. And now Shea Weber is gone. I don't know the next Shea Weber in this league. I don't know if we're going to ever see one like him again. But he did so much for the Canadians. Every time he went onto the ice, he left it out there. Every ounce of it. You talk about character and leadership. That was another big thing, apparently, with Shea Weber. I believe he won a Mark Messi Leadership Award the year he was actually traded to Montreal. Um, But this is a guy who I have the utmost respect for. Um, A lot of people were sort of questioning why he wasn't around the team this year, myself included at times, but the LTIR and the insurance apparently was a little messy and Kent Hughes couldn't always talk about it. He was nearly a coyote at the trade downline, apparently, but there were some things going on. We don't know all the details, but now he'll be doing whatever Shea Weber wants now. He's made like over a hundred million dollars, I'm pretty sure. Um, if he wants a job in Nashville, he'll get a job in Nashville. If he wants a job with the Habs, he'll get a job with the Habs. Um, I'm happy to say he was a Canadian. He was a favorite to watch, a unique specimen. It's a shame to say goodbye to Shea Weber. He's not formally retiring, but he basically is. Um, But yeah, Vegas get their uh, LTIR room. It's messy, but hey, uh, the Canadians get cast space and the NASA they can probably flip for a pick. it's a win-win. The Canadians didn't have to give up an asset to move the contract. I just love that. Uh, that's my favorite part of this deal. Um, that's everything. Thank you very much. Goodbye.